We'll uh, <laughs> turn our attention now to Ross Tucker, host of the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. You can check out on social media at Ross Tucker NFL. And it's great to have him with us. Ross, welcome back. What was it like when you got the call and said, you know what, you're part of the CBS team now? Well, first of all, Steve, thank you for having me. And, of course, great to hear your voice. And uh, that was a pretty cool moment, man. I I think you know this and can appreciate it. But I, my last year as a player was 2007, and I was injured. So starting in 2008, I, I went back, and I, I've done, on, on average, at least 20 games a year the last 15 years when you talk about college – for NBC Sports Network or CBS Sports Network and then radio for Westwood One and even doing the Eagles preseason games and the Pennsylvania State Championship. So it's been 300-some games, man, 300-some games to, to get this opportunity. Obviously really, really excited about it, and uh, I'm glad that more people are going to get a chance to, to hear me and, and hopefully enjoy what they have to hear. I'm not really the, always been a person that's, that's been big on saying, hey, you deserve that. I'm big on saying you earn that, and you earn this. That's why you deserve it. Wow. Thank you, Steve. I, I really appreciate you saying that, of course. And um, I like to think so, man. Uh, as you know, it's really, really hard, you know, because everybody, everybody that knows you, all my friends and family, they're always like, why aren't you doing this game or that game? Right. Or why aren't you doing yeah. the Penn State game? You're so much better than this guy or that guy. Yeah. And you know, yeah. it's a subjective. It's a subjective deal. Number one and number two. There's a lot of factors that go into, you know, who gets hired for these jobs. So, um, you know, it's it's a small package. I'm on the the number seven crew, but really, really looking forward to making the most of it. Well, seven becomes five becomes three. So let's see how things go. Uh, I've got a confidence in you that that's going to happen. So let's get to the Eagles because, you know, it's it's out of the gate with this team. Uh, preseason is a lot different than when you played, Ross, uh, because of who plays and who doesn't in the preseason. So how do you like to evaluate a preseason game? What do you look for based on what they give you to work with? Yeah, so it's funny because I, I had a social media video today. Um, you can check it out on Twitter or whatever it's called, at Ross Tucker NFL. I think, Steve, that people that say preseason games are meaningless, I, they, they, what they're talking about. I mean, if, if you want to say that the games don't count, oh, well, yeah, of course, we all know that. And right. if you want to say that they're pointless for the starters, um, some guys would agree with that. Some guys would disagree and say that they actually like getting a little bit of playing time in the preseason. So that kind of goes both ways. Um, what I would tell you, and even just this year, you know, my first game will be Saturday night as the the Eagles play in Baltimore against the Ravens. But – the one thing I would tell people is, like, the Eagles had the best roster in the NFL last year. And two things jump out to me about that. Number one, they have legitimate starting spots open, Steve, at linebacker and safety. And maybe both. I mean, maybe, maybe four spots, definitely two, are up for grabs, arguably three or four. And, you know, those positions in particular – Really hard to, to decide it in practice. Really hard. You got to see those guys out there, full speed, their game instincts, tackling. So number one, you got starting jobs available. Then mm -hmm. you got the last spot at each position, right? The five wide receiver, the number three tight end, the number five running back. And then even last year for the Eagles, they had the best roster in franchise history. And they had four undrafted free agent rookies make the team based on how they did in the second half of those preseason games. So the point I make to people is, you know, maybe you don't care as much about that stuff 
all I can tell you is I never played in a preseason game where I didn't know, for me, it was a really big deal because I was either battling for a starting spot, you know, a couple years, 02 Washington, 04 Buffalo, or 05 Buffalo, or a roster spot all the other years. And so it's funny because, you know, they all, every team has guys that play in the SEC championship or Big Ten championship or the college football playoff. For them and, and their lives – and their livelihood, these preseason games are more important than those championship games. I mean, those championship games are a big deal to the fan bases and whatever, and and maybe there's bigger crowds or whatever, but in terms of how the rest of their life turns out and their dream and their career, uh, the preseason games are, are way more important. And that's you know, and I tell everybody all the time. I said, look, I said for those guys who are battling for roster spots through thirty through forty six, this means everything to them. This is the this is the audition tape. This is Quez Watkins showing everybody I should not only be on the roster, I should be playing. Yeah, and you know the other thing I tell people, um, it's unbelievable, Steve, when you actually go through it and you see all the guys that get cut. I would encourage everybody listening this year, when you see the final cuts, just go through the amount of names that you recognize, the amount of names of guys that were just really good players at Penn State, really good. But, you know, Michael Mennett or whoever, you know, whoever it is that's getting cut and isn't making these teams, you're like, wow, I thought for sure – you know, that guy started three years at Penn State. I thought for sure he'd play in the NFL for a while. It, do- it doesn't work that way. Well, Bill O'Brien told me when I was talking to him about this when he was at Penn State, he said, Steve, the jump from high school to college is huge. He said the jump from college to the NFL is a chasm. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, for me, I, I thought – high school to college was a little bit more of a jump and that's interesting to come from me because you know I went to Princeton right I didn't go to Penn State or a power five school Uh, but that was a big jump Uh, this might surprise you Steve but at Princeton you know I just thought so highly of the power five guys and the NFL guys I, I had such high expectations that, believe it or not, when I got to the NFL, I actually thought they'd be better. And don't yeah. get me wrong, they were really, really good, but I didn't know if my first, tra- my first mini camp practice, I didn't know if LeVar Arrington or Big Daddy Wilkinson or Bruce Smith, I didn't know if they would pick me up over their head and throw me. Like, I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> you, know what I mean? well, I, you know, to yeah. me, I built these guys up so much in my head that they were larger than life that I actually got there. I was like, okay, like they're definitely bigger and they're way faster, but they actually still are human beings, right? Like they are human beings. They're just way better than the guys in the Ivy league, but they weren't quite as, um, as Superman ash as as they had been in my head. Well, the story I tell here all the time to people is that 2005 Penn State's three wide receivers were Derek Williams, five-star, Deion Butler, a walk-on, and Jordan Norwood, a gray shirt. They all made the NFL. Everybody has a different path, and they adjust to the level. It's all about how you adjust to the next level. And some people, regardless of standing in life, adjust better than others, and that's how it happens. Well, and how about this, too? How about this, too, Steve? That's a great example because Deion Butler, I don't know if he still is, but he was, at one point, he was Penn State's all-time leading receiver, right? Yeah. Um, In either receptions or yards, and we all know how great Derek's career was. Those guys didn't last real long in the NFL. You know, so they made it, and but it just goes to show you how hard the NFL is. I mean, Derek Williams helped change the program. When he's a five-star, he goes to Penn State. You know, as a true freshman, he's dynamic. They end up beating Ohio State, all those things. But, um, you know, those guys didn't didn't have real long NFL careers because that's how good you have to be to have an, a long NFL career. You know, I always ask you about uh, myfrontpagestory.com. 
And it's not just for, for the standard holidays, which we do talk about, but birthdays, anniversaries, things like that. It really is great to do that because it's a little different, but it tells a story unto itself. Well, and what blows me away, Steve, is evidently late August, September, October are the biggest months for weddings, which I yeah. can't believe. I mean, that should be illegal to get married <laughs> I, during football I, I, season. I, 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 had, I had several of my buddies that did that. Which yes. I said to them, well, obviously, obviously, you don't care that I, if I'm there or not. They're like, dude, right? She wants to get married in the fall. I'm like, well, what's more important, your fiance or me? Okay, let's get some priorities <laughs> here. Um, but no, what what it means, Steve? What it means is there's a lot of guys with anniversaries coming up. Nobody yep. knows what to get their significant other for an anniversary or a birthday. I'm just telling everybody listening: go to myfrontpagestory.com. By far the best gift I've ever seen for your wife or significant other for anything. Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, it's awesome. Well, you're awesome. I'm thrilled for you. Great job with the Eagles coming up. I'm so happy you're going to be on CBS. They made the right choice. I remember, I think I was listening to you on the Army-Navy game last year on radio on Westwood. Uh, and you did such a great job. I actually sat in the driveway for an extra 10 minutes just to listen. So, oh, that's great. awesome. I do that with you, Steve, all the time, just so you know. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it, Ross. Hey, have a good one. We will talk shortly, my friend. All right, take care.